Okay, so how big of a problem are upstream on upstream patches? So what is an upstream project? Yes, some of these are going to be very beginner. I apologize for that, but I want to be as inclusive as possible. So, um, and also kind of define what terms mean because some of these variables are overloaded. So um, in this context, you have the project source code um, that is then configured and built and packaged and included into a distro, which is then a, collect a collection of packages. And if being confusing, uh, please let me know. So uh, what is a patch? So from the previous one, it is a modification of that original source code. That's all. You can do it for a number of reasons, like fixing CVEs, which everyone seems to care about nowadays. Um, there are other bugs that aren't CVEs that you do want to fix. Um, some people like adding features and enabling cool things. Um, like drivers. Yes, like a driver. Um, or you might want to integrate your source code into a build environment like a Yocto, like a build root, like a even Fedora. Debian. Debian. Uh, or Debian. Um, again, these are not all inclusive. These are hand wavy things. And there are other reasons why you may choose to do it. So here's the question. What should we do with this patch that we've just created? You upstream it, obviously. And hopefully everyone that's in this room understands upstreaming, but um, it's kind of a circular ring here. You find an issue, you fix the issue, you submit it upstream. It's then iterated with the upstream maintainer until they accept it. And that does happen eventually, probably. Um, it, it's then accepted and released into the new version of whatever uh, software that is. And then you find another bug and iterate ad infinitum. So here's the simple question. Why don't we just use upstream? So some of us have um, things we work on which are time iterative. For example, Yocto releases every six months. You might not be able to release or not, not able to use the latest version because you're releasing at a certain time point and that one releases at a future point. So I was going to say there's another option too and it, it's something that... Uh... Is very common at a lot of a lot of uh, embedded places, um, depending on the the industry they're in, or indeed whether they're they're a part of governments and that sort of thing. And they will say we cannot upstream, and so you know we're special. We can't yeah. upstream. <laughs> mm -hmm. Whether or not you agree with them is a separate piece. Everyone has an excuse, right. um, <laughs> <laughs> or upstream won't take it, which yeah. it it does happen. Um, for example, you're unique build environment they don't care about and don't want to muddy their pristine upstream things with this ugly build stuff. Um, your feature or fix isn't fully baked. For example, if you're releasing something, you might have to put an ugly hack out there just to get it to not work. So for example, I think many of us have worked enough to see someone introduce a sleep into something because the sleep makes it work. Um, oh. Yes, yeah, so like, um, it makes your deity cry when you do that. Um, or there are some examples of essentially upstreams being abandoned for whatever reason. The uh, maintainer isn't there, isn't responsive in a timely fashion, which in some cases might be years. Um, I think we've all seen the uh, internet, the XKCD, where it's the internet and it's just one uh, little tiny pillar of one person maintaining one library or whatever. Um, I guess I should have included that because I'm seeing some faces that haven't seen that. So uh, if you come to me afterwards and I will show you this XKCD, um, that with the compiling one or the two that will change your life. So we have to keep patches in our distro tree. It, like that's kind of where we're at. Um, sure, but we can just take the upstream versions and pull those back and then eventually we'll update and we'll, we're in a perfect world where this happens, right? Um, so this is this thing called um, drive-by patches. I like the, the term drive-through because I think it's more accurate because it, it is fast and it is really bad for you. Um, drive-through, for uh, people that don't know, is a fast food restaurant where you can drive up in your car, not get out. They put food that's really bad for you in it, and then you drive off and consume it. And it's usually greasy and salty, which are two things that are really bad for your health. Um, so these are patches that are created for the distro, but not submitted for upstream. 
there are reasons why you want to do it. They're never good. But these are the problems. Whose problem is it? Like, like this is a real question. Is it a problem for the person that created the patch to fix, like, submit upstream? Like, is the impetus on them? Is it on the person that owns the, the, the That, that's one I'm actually very opinionated on. And, mm -hmm. and I really, I think as a maintainer, if you're taking that patch and, and not asking why wasn't this submitted upstream and going through those questions, it, that's, that's my responsibility as a maintainer. Mm -hmm. and, and if they can say it was submitted upstream and, and I'm doing this, well, then maybe I'll take it. But if they're saying it wasn't submitted upstream and they're not willing to submit it upstream, then I, my responsibility is to say no because... This isn't the way this is working. But what if you need it? Like, like, well, what if your package and every, we're all perfect maintainers, but what if your package is really, really, really broken and you can't ship without it? Ask them to submit. They have to make an effort. Yeah. So if you look at the Android kernel get tree, um, yeah, uh, there's stuff which is upstream that they pull back mm -hmm. and then there's stuff which is like, oh, it's on the mailing list and you mm -hmm. can go see the thread. But everything has to be, I mean, you, you sh like a lot of the, like most of the patches have an explanation of, of why it's not upstream. Yeah. And I feel like that's a good policy. Yeah, uh, I'll get it to in a second, but there needs to be a base level of, of that for best practices, if you will. Um, but we live in the real world and people are lazy, um, sorry. Um, but yeah, um, but uh, continuing the, the point, if the upstream project has never notified of the problem, will they ever know? It's entirely possible that they won't, especially in an embedded environment where it fixes your problem and it goes out on a drone or something and like, who cares? Well, people care and someone's gonna hit the problem probably in the future. Um, and then there's, there's the problem of not only using upstream. So, um, if you fixed it and didn't submit it, it will bit rot. Uh, bit rot is where your patch ages over time, um, but it, because you update it and things change around it and it might not apply, apply cleanly and then one day the, the sky falls. Um, and also duplication of effort. Um, I think we all know in this industry, we don't have enough hands to fix everything and duplication of effort, some, you know, two people doing the, fixing the exact same problem um, is a waste a collective waste of our time. If you disagree, please, you know, I'm happy to argue with, with you on those. So all this is theoretical, right? Well, I mean, I think everyone in this room knows it's not actually theoretical. So um, why did I, uh, uh, like, so why, why did I do this talk? Um, so I'm not saying this is the company I work for or a previous company, and I'm not gonna name the product, but um, a board support package that I um, may or may not have maintained um, <laughs> had a U-boot patch, which was enabling this platform, allegedly. And um, <laughs> so the person that enabled it put it in there and put it as a, a pending state, which I'll get into states in a second. And for four years, I asked this person, you're gonna upstream it, right? You're gonna upstream it, right? You're gonna upstream it, right? Of course. Um, and then um, we may or may not have released a new version of a layer I may or may not maintain. And, <laughs> And I asked again, so you're going to upstream it, right? And this person had moved on to a new project, so I asked the person that's doing it now, and they're like, no, we're just going to drop support of the BSP. Like, that's like, like, that's like a little soul crushing, right? Like, instead of upstreaming a very trivial patch to enable a board, they're just going to like, eh. allegedly. I'm not saying this happened. This could be fictitious. Um, so, yeah, so, so that hurt a little bit. So we have patches living in our trees forever. It's it like, this can't be true. Like this, this can't be the answer, right? So Yocto. <laughs> so I'm doing Yocto first because um, it's 
what I work on, or open embedded. Um, and um, it's easiest to generate the, the data from. And, and, and you'll see why in a second, because um, Yocto actually has different types of patches. So I, I did um, some terrible shell scripting and I went through and I looked at the, um, the type of patches we have for the latest version that came out last week. Right, Nembo came like out that. last week? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so this is fairly cutting edge. Um, so 200 of them are backports. Uh, uh, you didn't mention the, the absolute status. I'm not a very deal of the patches. How, how do you get that information? Oh, oh, like, well, oh sorry. sorry. You mean the slide? The next one? Yeah, okay. yeah. So I, I'll go what all these mean in a second. It's kind of a chicken and egg problem. How can I describe what they are but, and then tell you what they are? Like, um, I guess I could have gone another way around. Um, but anyway, so yes, 200 are backports, 253 are pending, 452 are inappropriate, uh, 232 have been submitted, uh, 19 are, are denied, 21 are inactive. And then we also have a separate field for CVEs and we have 69 of those. Um, I'll leave that one alone. So uh, what does that mean? So what is pending? And if you wanted to click on the link, you can actually, there's a big article in the documentation what these mean um, and a better description than I'm giving. Pending means you're gonna do something. Pen, <laughs> pen, pending is the problem. I promise. <laughs> yes, I, I, I pinky swear that something will happen. Um, submitted means you've submitted it upstream, uh, usually a like lower link or something like that, depending on what the project uses. Uh, backports are fantastic. You essentially usually have a SHA where you've backported it from. Um, um, and then when you rebase, like it'll magically melt away and those are fantastic. Denied, um, you've made an effort. It's similar to submitted, but you know the outcome. Um, but at least you've tried and now the world knows there is a problem. Um, inactive upstream, self-explanatory. Uh, inappropriate usually is with a for your build system. For example, you need to fix the path to something or um, pull in a certain kind of thing that lives in another place. They're, they're pretty unique. They are numerous, but they're numerous because you need them. Um, questions about that? Do, do those make sense? You, you still didn't uh, uh, specify what upstream status is. Uh, how it's, well, uh, what types are there, but uh, yes. the same, so, it's a tag that is mandatory yes. for all the patches. Yes, so, and, and I'll get into that in a second, but yes, in every single patch in the Octo, with a few exceptions, um, legacy exceptions, um, there is a field in every patch as part of your commit message, what is the upstream status, right? Hey, John. Yes, sir. That's for open embedded core, it's, the policy is on a per layer basis to be. Uh, yes. Okay. I happen to have a layer that I don't put upstream status on, but that's because I know that not every layer is going to do this and I'm guilty. <laughs> yes. And, and without getting into the weeds of what Yocto and Open Embedded are yeah. and how they overlap and, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff, um, it, it is highly recommended that you do this. Everything core does this and has done it for some time question over here so just really quick i'm just going to have a question myself um yes this is an open embedded that this doesn't sound like it is somebody else could use this in a different build system yes so the same the same metadata could be used by a build root for instance yeah. or whatever else yes. which, which is really cool and build root does have uh without I'm running sorry. ahead apologies no 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 like people are gonna have these questions doesn't doesn't debian do something similar with its patches I'll get into why uh, other distros and why I don't have good data. <laughs> how how uh, strict is a, the project's policy around denied? Because to me, that, that seems like the most red flag around, like, that's upstream has rejected it. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, uh, like, if you look at the numbers, they're very small numbers. Yeah, because that seems like obvious technical debt of, like, rebasing on those is probably going to be the most painful. It, but in theory something because there is now a known problem on the mailing list there will be a fix which in the next release should throw this away and roll back on i would in, in theory way hand wavy kind of stuff but yes it, it is it is a red flag i would tend to say it can be very complicated so 
Well, I work at Red Hat and Pharrell. We, we have similar uh, tags like this for upstream status for our internal patch. We have maybe a couple hundred uh, internal only patches for Rel that same reason upstream didn't want. A lot of it's around features or security hardening that upstream isn't interested yet, but we need to for compliance reasons. So, you know, we have some, uh, uh, we use J get Jerry pick. So that, that by having a hash in there, it mm. automatically describes the backport, right? Mm -hmm. You don't need backport, but we do have, uh, we do, if, if it's only rel only, or if you submit it to something that's like a pending, we, we give a, a link to a tree of where yeah. it is and what tricks it, you know, it takes, it could take a couple months to kind of propagate up the Linus's tree, but, but no, it's popular for us. Um, I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Oh, you say uh, uh, you, uh, the inappropriate status is for uh, things like build system patches that aren't appropriate upstream. But um, do you ever try submitting those upstream anyway? Because maybe upstream wants them regardless. So actually, uh, some of those uh, denied uh, uh, tags. Uh, it's uh, uh, technical debt. Yes, sure. But sometimes uh, upstream project can uh, uh, come back and say, we do not support cross compiling. We only support native compilation. So, and that's uh, uh, the patch that we need to carry ourselves uh, to enable cross compilation and uh, uh, build system specific uh, patches. Yes. So we uh, try to uh, submit them upstream and sometimes they are uh, being denied. I'm more concerned about the pending. I think what you're describing is submitted about pending uh, pen pending pending is, means you're going to submit it. Yes, but, but like, <laughs> yeah, you don't don't allow pending. Yeah, yeah, but pen pending is the problem, and r running ahead by identifying these states, you've kind of encouraged people by making it mandatory to have these things in there. You've kind of encouraged someone to do what you want them to do anyway, right? By by defining the problem, you've you're slowly solving the problem. Like running ahead. Yeah. So, isn't inactive upstream also pretty awful? Like, if upstream's dead, well, why we should drop it, right? Like, the, the, what's there, the there are, without, uh, I, I know of projects that are 20 years old that are still in use because they're so ubiquitous yeah. that, but you would, you could argue them, why do those need to be patched? You know the world changes under you, and if no one's going to respond, yeah. Anyway, I mean, w would you want to maintain a project that's that's not yours, that's twenty years old, and pull in patches? I wouldn't. <laughs> Speaking to that, I mean, are you aware that D ISC DHCP is dead? How many? How, how many? Yeah, I was going to say, how, how many people in this room are still running ISC DHCP? I, I mean, very few people are, have switched off to. Kira, whatever the, the yeah, Kia, yeah, thank you. Um, so, I, I, yeah, yeah. Just because it's dead doesn't mean that it's not still useful. And so, yeah. like, I like th th there's so many projects out there that upstream no longer exists for that fundamentally you can't get rid of. Like, there, there's yeah. just no. I, I was gonna say, how many people in this room are even? have vaguely thought about moving to Kia. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's good luck. Yeah. 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 Ye
since Yocto has six month iterations, of course, things that are six months or younger are going to be more frequent, but you do kind of want to see this kind of long tail. Theoretically, there should be zeros closer to the end here, but things are melting away. But what's old? So these are pending and we have 13 year old patches and I'm willing to bet money that it's, they're 13 years old because we moved to get 13 years ago. <laughs> um, Wild time. <laughs> Um, so Tickle TK, XORG, XORG may or may not be dead, so maybe it just gets dropped at some point. I'm not going to make any argument like that. Um, no one uses IP tables, right? <laughs> um, drop bear. Um, yeah, so it, it, it is kind of egregious that these are old and pending. But it used to be worse, right? So, so this is 4.2. Um, you can, I, I guess if I had animated it, you could see it like shrinking or actually technically growing over time because we're going it back in time, much like back to the future. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna click to these. You can see that the numbers are slightly higher. Same problems. Six months ago, it was still 13 years. Um, four one. Numbers are slightly higher. You can look at the slides. I don't think it's super interesting to anyone else to, um, for me to point out the exact numbers. Slightly higher, but still the long tail. Um, okay, so this was two years ago. I think that number is slightly screwed up. Um, number slightly higher. Again, I don't think these are super interesting, but someone did the graphs for me and I don't wanna waste their time by not showing them. Um, There's progress then. Yes. So wh what I'm attempting to show over this is because Yocto has been doing it this way for a and open embedded for a number of years, the nu the number of pending patches has decreased over time. That's with new ones being added. At the same yeah, time. the new ones are being added, and old ones are rolling away. It's uh, still going down. Yes, and it's still going over down, but it's it is. Um, it's still, it's like around 2000 and now we're around 1700 collectively. But pending going down doesn't necessarily mean they have been pushed upstream. They could have been marked like. They, they, uh, they could have been thrown away, which I would argue is still a win mm -hmm. because there's no technical debt, right? Okay. Or, or maybe that feature was never actually used so they threw it away. I mean, there could be a number of reasons why you removed patches. Uh, we're getting a little bit uh, uh, stricter uh, by uh, uh, mm. asking people to uh, have at least submitted, uh, yeah. not not pending a uh, uh, patch. So, there's a, a comment as well. Talks about applied upstream. Yeah. yeah, and that might be part of the problem of why I have garbage numbers for distros is because I'm not using the keywords, the correct keywords. Um, so, blah, blah, blah. This looked like it was actually out of order. I apologize for that. Okay, so build root. Um, so I looked at the last release. Um, there are roughly 1,600 patches, 35 with upstream status set. Again, this isn't their, they don't use this policy. So of course they don't have these restrictions. And I'm willing to bet that the 35 are from Yocto that they pulled over for fixing a similar problem. You mean the ones we copied from Debian? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, from Gen 2. Hmm? From Gen 2. <laughs> um, There's a lot of patch sharing. In the only two were marked as a CVE. I think that probably is something, with, without knowing the intricacies of BuildRoot, they probably want to use some kind of demarcation of CVEs because that is something that I think people are going forward going to look at um, more frequently. Yeah, um, and yeah, upstream status because almost none of them had were demarked. I marked all of them as null. It it's a crap data point, but it is a data point. Um, and so here's a different way I tried to look at it because it's all in Git. I try to see how many have been modified frequently, 
to me, that is something that's been carried around a long time. It's been modified frequently. Um, it's a really hard to read, and it's even harder to read over here. But um, things that have been modified once, which is the middle, original commit, is somewhere around 1,700, 1, 1,300. Um, and then modified two. But, but there are two that you can see here in the long tail that have been modified 14 times, which means they've been around for a long time and they've been modified frequently. That's probably something that's either related to how they build or it's a something they should have pushed upstream. I, I wasn't able to get in the weeds to figure out why they hadn't, why they didn't do it. And I didn't think it was really that interesting, but I could be wrong. And then I tried to look at Fedora and this is gonna be pretty terrible. Um, so the, so before you look at the number, let me explain why the number, why, why it's garbage. <laughs> so with Buildroot and, and Pocky, I'm able to get a Git tree that I can parse and use Git history to look at real numbers. I can't do that with Fedora because there's no canonical tree that has all the sources with all the patches that I can parse. So what I did is I downloaded all the source RPMs and, and ripped them apart. And then I looked at all of them and looked at them like patches. And if they're patches that are with, you know, Git format patch, then it'll have a properly formatted email header I can parse. A lot of the, the vast majority of them don't. So I can't generate any. And I mean, there's 17,000 patches, obviously. Pardon? Well, no, that's, this is for the full distro list. We have the source history. The kernel, but most of it's still maintaining this kit. Oh, yeah. All of that is actually still unfigured, and you can you can look at the patches there. There's git trees mm -hmm. for each of the you know, disk gits. Wait, so but would I need to go in each individual one and clone yeah, each individual yeah, git tree? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess that's not that much worse it's, than ripping apart every <laughs> source. <laughs> <laughs> it's scriptable. I'm not saying it's yes. No, no, yes. no, no, no. no. <laughs> Um, and, and that might be worth doing. Um, essentially, this is one of the ones where I, I hit this roadblock and ran out of time, and I'm like, uh, okay, future work. Um, but yeah, so of Fedora 36 that I ripped apart, there are 13 that are marked as CVEs, and two have upstream statuses. <laughs> Again, there's no uniform way of doing this. There, um, to uh, Masahiro's point, there are probably different keywords that I'm not looking for that I probably could have been smarter about. I mean, so Fedora is, is an interesting one because an interesting one because RHEL has RHEL has requirements for upstream first. Mm -hmm. I mean that that's kind of our policy there, right? And so we do also have requirements for upstream status being patches, those those types of fit. Uh, Fedora all the rel packages are in fedora and so those are usually maintained in a similar way a couple of them are maintained by community instead but we've also got a lot of packages that are not maintained in that way they're maintained mm -hmm. by someone else so it, it gets yeah there's not a lot of uniformity around there mm -hmm. there's not a lot of policy around there and because these are not employees these are community you can't really for i mean we can force some but you, you can't force too much yeah Um, this is actually interesting, um, and you're right, you can't force it, but you, it can be gamified. And so to a large degree, I think uh, comparing these different uh, build systems in different communities is actually really interesting because it means you can start, uh, not quite shaming, but you can at least give them numbers that they can work towards, uh, you know, improvements or, or whatever else, or, or sharing. Because I mean, clearly there's got to be commonalities between some of the patches that have gone between different things. So this is actually kind of an interesting yeah. idea and an interesting thing to have done. So. But, uh, I also tried to do something very stupid as well and essentially ran diff. I did a find of every single patch and then ran diff to see if I could get a match. And that was running for days and days and days with no hits. So, and there's probably not enough of a, of a fuzz to make it actually worthwhile. We should probably move to Alejandro. Okay. So, um, okay. okay. So, uh, like two slides to wrap up. Okay. Okay. So, are there things that we can uh, do commonly to uh, make this better for everyone? And if we could all use Git format patch or something like that, so we actually have email headers so that something like this could be scripted, so you could tell the ages and that kind of stuff, that would be something. Um, adding an upstream status or similar field. 
um, to know what state all the patches are in would be something. Um, and I think it would be something we could be measurable. And um, to the point, if we only allowed patches that have been submitted or even accepted, then there wouldn't be a problem, but that also, you know, the streets would be paved with gold and everyone has a fuzzy yeah. kitten or something. Everyone would use uh, upstream kernels. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we haven't, I, I haven't really had much. Sorry. I haven't really had much problem with saying if it's not submitted, I'm not going to take it. And usually I say I want submitted, I would want at least one review upstream to, to get an idea where it's headed. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we, I haven't run into anything critical that I can't take. Well, but you also, are you supporting any hardware where you have to get the release out so that the hardware? No, that lets, well, I mean, yes, we do, but no, we don't. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, we support. Yes. <laughs> and there's still the problem yet that you upstream just might be dead. I just took over a project which I actually believe the maintainer died. And so yeah, yeah. that's he was an he yeah. was an active yeah. contributor to open source and from one day to the other he just went disappeared. Away. Mm -hmm. So and that was like not 30 years ago, but like five years ago. So I just took over the project, went through all the distros, see what patches were flying mm -hmm. around. Of course, there were duplicated effort and tried to, to get a new upstream so that we have a mm -hmm. new point. But there, as you know, there are lots of projects where nobody stepped up to continue the work. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, accepted is uh, incorrect uh, field. So. If it's accepted, it's actually uh, becomes a backport. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if it has been accepted, it should be a backport. And you could even make the argument that the patches should get redone once they get submitted, so that they so that the ba the backport goes away when you rebase. Yeah. Git notes. I, I'm not familiar with that one. Well, Git notes. It lets you attach metadata to a commit that already exists without having to like. Okay. Cool, cool. Yeah, that's cool. How do you view the notes? Okay, anyway, I think I'm out of time, right? Yeah, we okay. should. Okay, cool. Thanks, everybody.